Praise everybody. So blessing to be here today. Oh my God, my baby's here. Come on, say amen. Give the Lord a hand. Praise everybody. Amen. Amen. That's my child right there. Praise God. Uh, happy Pi Day to everybody. Uh, it's, we're just excited about the Lord and excited that uh, God has given us a messenger who has his message, not his message, but the Lord's message. And so we're excited about God and excited about the word of God. And I'm going to yield the floor to our pastor. Come on, say amen for Pastor Blaine. Mm -hmm. You need something? Uh, water somewhere. Good morning. How y'all doing? Good. I have some down here. Get Romans, the eighth chapter. Yes, that's it. Romans, the eighth chapter. Thank you. I want to say we're grateful to the Lord, and uh, I have hope uh, that we're nearing uh, uh, the worst part of the pandemic, where we'll be able to get back to life as normal. But, you know, I've always been so weird all my life is I kind of like this right here, where you got to wear a mask and you don't know me, I don't know you, and you got to keep your distance. I really like that part. Oh, well, you know, social distancing, I don't want to be around you, no way. Social distancing, you know. You got to put your mask on. And, and then, you know, what I've learned, what, what happened was, uh, actually, I got used to not going. I looked around, I was here, I thought I had to do this, I thought I had to get on a plane, go to California, I had to be in New York. And then I found out that if I stayed at home, I'll start improving my house. Our house looked better than it's looked. I don't know. We have fixed the garage and all kind of stuff. And so certainly it's true what the Bible says in Romans 8. So Romans 8 chapter where he says that, for we know that all things work together for good. <clears throat> and this is in Romans the 8th chapter where we're going to start today uh, We've been in a series, kind of, talking about the spirit. <clears throat> and let me say this. How many of y'all sleepy? <sighs> I'm sleepy. I'm sleepy. I lost an hour. I stayed up to 2 o'clock. It's kind of like that commercial, you know, where they said that you like your parents. And they said, hold on. They don't, you don't, they don't know you. <laughs> and they come up to it and say, look, nobody cares what time you got up this morning. Um, but anyway, I was up to 2 o'clock, and I saw the clock turn from 2 o'clock, Brian, to 3 o'clock, and I said, Lord, have mercy, let me get in the bed. And so when the clock hit this morning, Lady Deborah and I both complained and talked and, and all this, and, uh, and last night I told Lady Deborah, I said, they think we like going to church. Y'all think, <laughs> think, think we love this, don't you? We are compelled to do this. We are compelled to do this because, Sister Linda Cox, that was a place that my God allowed me to go to, a dark place. And it was a place, uh, Brother, Brother Hughes, I can't blame anybody else. I took myself there off of my own self-will. And that's what we want to talk about this morning. And we don't have to be here no long time. We don't have to make it real uh, or deep or anything. But we do need to put it in a position, in, in, in terms where we understand what it is that God, you see, it's one thing, <laughs> it's one thing when you're not trying. Say amen for Brother Wade Lacey coming in. Oh, glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Chief. What, what a blessing. What a blessing. What a blessing. But Parker, you don't know the story about it, but we lost two. Right here, right here, we lost Brother Davis. We lost for our Sister Jean. It looked like we were getting ready to lose Brother Lacey. They said, we've, they met a back. <laughs> Ryan called me that night, brother. I don't quit my sermon and we're talking about something else. That's all right. But, uh, Ryan called me that night, I was in Little Rock, and he said, Pastor, I'm calling because I know the daddy will want me to call you, but they, they airlifted him to Texarkana. I said, why Texarkana? He said, because there ain't no beds in between. Thank y'all don't understand. Let me tell you, he said that he's there, 
And I don't know how long he was there, but I talked to him, and he, he, he was there from December to up until, I don't know, January, February. He, February, he was there, there and he said he couldn't walk. It, it had him down, and he was on the respirator. But I want you to know, he just walked through the nobody but my God. Nobody but my God. But my God. I, the first communication I received from him was a text and everything. And I had to text him back. You know, Pastor, I, I don't know nothing to tell you but the truth. I, I told I texted him back and I said, Brother, I wasn't expecting to never get no more text from you. And so I, ju I just thank the Lord. We come here to get an understanding this morning. You know, folks that don't work, you, you, you really ought not expect to have no money. <laughs> but if you're going to work, Brother Parker, every day, you had a job, you've been on for 10, 15 years, and, and, and something come up and, and, and you can't even put $500 together, something wrong. Something wrong. If you wasn't working, it'd be one thing. Well, what it is is some of us have been in church all our life. And everything that we use, we, we, we doing the best that we can. We come to church, y'all told us to keep the Ten Commandments. Y'all told us don't lie, don't steal, or, or whatever. And, and we tried. And, and I'm so glad for the Bible because the Bible says, that the Apostle Paul says, that, 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 that uh, I said in my mind that I wasn't going to do nothing. But what I found out, this is Paul in Romans the seventh chapter. He said, every time that I seek to do good, evil is present with me. I, it's not like I don't want to do no better, but I find, I, I find another law in my members warring against the law of my mind. I don't want to hurt my mama. I don't want to make my mama cry, but look like sin. <laughs> has dominion over me. So Paul, Paul cries out in Romans, the seventh chapter, and we've been talking about the ministry of the Spirit, and you know, <clears throat> the devil, he specializes in sending you down the wrong path. And so what they had me thinking was, was the Spirit <laughs> was, was to make you do this right here. The Spirit was to make you dance and jump and run through the church. The Spirit was for the, when the guitar player hit and, and the organ player. The Spirit was when that woman, you know, that big old woman that had them size 60, thank you, Jesus. When she went to singing and everything, <laughs> that was the Spirit. I, but, but, you know, I'm so glad to find out that the Spirit, Jesus in John, the 15th chapter, he said, I've got to go. Flesh is not supposed to direct you. I've got to go. I've got to condemn sin in the flesh. I'm going to take this flesh. You see, y'all are full of sin. And so I'm going to take this flesh to the cross where it can die and be buried, where you can be resurrected in the newness of life. And the lie that we believe was that once that we were converted, then we wouldn't sin no more. Your expectations can keep you sick. <laughs> Oh, that's like I'm some folks say, marriage ain't what you thought it was. <laughs> because you thought when you got married, now it's like Prince Charming. And then now, now everything is going to be fine and everything. But the problem was you married a human being. <laughs> and the human being that you married did not even feel comfortable with really showing you who they were before y'all started living together. <laughs> I can't do nothing but tell y'all the truth. When I first got married, I was working at Coca-Cola. We were living in Little Rock. <laughs> and you know, for you know, Lady Deborah, certain things I just didn't want her to see. I know she figured I used the bathroom, but I didn't really want to do it right there. Thank you, Jesus. And so I would use the bathroom when I had to do number two, I get Coca-Cola or whatever. Uh, but you know, one of them days came, I couldn't make it to Coca-Cola. And so, so thank you, I just leave the door open now. Thank you, Jesus. You got to realize the truth. The Bible said, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. And we done told too many people up in church that if you just do the right thing, then you will be saved. But salvation ain't got nothing to do with doing the right thing. Salvation has to do with what you believe. What got you? Everybody up in here, what got you messed up or whatever shape you in the day is because of what you believe. <laughs> the moment that you believe something different, your life will be different. <laughs> I found myself saved. 
<clears throat> wanting to commit suicide. I found myself saved and trying to figure out a way. How can I commit? I, I had money and all. We had three banks then. I had money in every bank. I had. I was driving a, 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 what a, a Lexus with Coach Lever and everything. Everybody patting me on the back, talking about how great you are and everything. And I'm trying to figure out, Brother Parker, how can I commit suicide without hurting my family? <laughs> And I looked at my Bible, and in the Bible, I read where it says, in the presence of the Lord is the fullness of joy. And I said, God, I know I'm in your presence. I said, God, let me tell you something. That's the reason you need to have your own experience with God. Because I want you to know the devil is going to challenge you about what you believe. The devil is going to try to call you a phony and a hypocrite. The devil is going to try to make you believe that all that stuff that you believe ain't nothing to it. And that's the reason you've got to press your way. Jesus told the Pharisees, he said, the kingdom of God suffered violence, and the violence take it by force. Anything that you want, anything, Sheriff, that's worth having, you got to fight for what is sure. You got to fight your way through. Oh, something come easy, but there's some things that, baby, you're going to have to press your way through. You got to hold on to the horns of the altar until you get your deliverance. Some things you can't have because you don't want them bad enough. Paul says, woe unto me if I preach not the gospel. If you're just preaching for the anniversaries, if you're just preaching for the three-piece suits, if you're just preaching for the folks that pat you on your back, the moment they stop patting you on the back, the moment that Jesus came in, they were saying, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he that come in the name of the Lord. But by Friday, they were saying, crucify him. But he would not come down because he knew that God had a purpose for, for his for his life so I come here this morning for no other purpose but to find out God help me the Bible said that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and I come here this morning and say God help me I want you to know something your pride and fear will keep you from walking into your purpose with God God already has ordained for you not for other folks you, you see crooked people always want to try to make you feel like there's only so much you supposed to have. You can't live in that kind of house. Your children can't go to that church. I mean that, that school. That certain things can't happen. But I want you to know the Bible says that God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that you might ask or think. <laughs> but the prophet said at one time and I'm almost through. The prophet said at one time he says he says uh, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. And the problem with man is, is that man won't be led by God's spirit. I said man. I, I didn't say you. I said man. It ain't a dime worth of difference between none of us. If you don't think it's, you think it's a difference between us, go to the council ward. <laughs> they don't care if you got a PhD or a GED. If you go to the council, the same thing that happened to somebody else can happen to you. <laughs> Uh, here Tiger Woods is and you got a billion dollars huh? and you ain't no better than me you and your wife fighting over the cell phone thank you Jesus <laughs> the problem started where God told them don't eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil <laughs> you don't never have no problem out of folks till they know something <laughs> oh Jesus <laughs> I have folks that don't come here no more simply because they think they know now. You see, when I teach, I don't hold back from you and I impart a whole lot of knowledge to you. But you don't know what I know <laughs> because it's coming through me. And the way God works is the more you give, the more he'll give you. And so what I take from it, I don't keep it to myself like most folks do. I take it and give it to you. And when I give, it's given back to me. Good measure. Press, you don't understand. Press together and shake it down. But the problem that you have, Sister Shirley, is, is that some people don't want nothing but a little bit of something. You watch them. The moment... That's just like folks that get their taxes. They buy the same thing every time. 
Some folks don't want nothing but a little something. But you got some folks that say, God, I want everything that you got for me. Now, let me tell you something. When God starts blessing you, folks on God getting messy. When when God starts blessing you, I'll tell you something. When we first came to Helena, we lived in a certain neighborhood. And I liked the neighborhood. I liked the house. But God saw fit that he moved us out of there and put us into another house. And there was a person that lived next door to us that I thought we was tight. But they ain't had nothing to do with us since. Sometimes God will move you from a place. It's not because sometimes God will move you because he has a destiny for you. And I heard somebody say when he called you, it wasn't a party line. It was not a conference call. When he called you, he called. He called you. Beloved, we're only here for a few days. So many folks I know is gone on. Michelle Hunter, she gone. Growler Taylor, he gone. And now, now, Sister Irma T. Jackson, she 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 just left here. Uh, for, for, for folks is leaving and, and and going on into destiny. And God don't want me to live and die like a fool, Brother Park. Uh, the Bible said, redeem the days. The days are evil. He said, walk circumspectly. And what I like about God is uh, that because you've been a fool. You don't have to stay no fool because God is a transformative God. God will take you from where you are to where he meant. It is, it is, it is not a surprise to God that you bless like you are now. Oh, you, it's a surprise to me and you. I, I tell people all the time, you might not think nothing of what I have in my life now. You might not think nothing of it. But Sister Brown, from where I came from, from where God brought me from, I could just throw this microphone down right now and skip all the way home. Some of y'all don't even know what skipping is. If you ever catch a Negro and he's skipping, that's one happy Negro. Thank you, Jesus. I could skip all the way home. Give me a bag of vanilla wafers and some hoop cheese and some hot and some hip boots and I I'll skip all the way home. We've been in a series about the Holy Spirit. The problem began when man wanted to know something. God had told them, don't, don't eat from the tree. And I didn't understand that. What, what is the deal with the tree? Well, the deal with the tree is, is that once you know, I can't tell you nothing. Uh, now, I'm going to give you my subject now. And we'll move from there. Look at your neighbor and look them right there in the eye and just tell them that all you need to know is that you don't know. That's, that's, that's how I run up out of here. Robert Wright, I didn't never get off cocaine until I knew that I didn't know how to stop. The day that I came to the end of my road, the day that I realized, God, I might know how to do this and how to do that. I might know how to wash a car. I might know how to change oil, but I don't know how to stop smoking these cocaine. This little rock right here got me bound, got me messed up. I don't know how to do it. God, I don't know. Help me because I can't help myself. And the day that I said that I didn't know that he enabled me his grace is sufficient. God can and God will and he has no respect of person. God has no respect of person. Brother Wade Lacey God ain't stunning your past. You see, because your past is your greatest asset. See, see, there's only your past uniquely qualifies you to help other people. It's something, Mother Bland, when you're trying to tell somebody and you know what you're talking about. Now, you see, 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 you can tell somebody that no matter how drunk your hood might get. 
no matter how he embarrassed you, no matter how many times you had to go down there and get him in jail, no matter how many times that he rolled on the floor and, and front of you can tell him, say, baby, you can stay married. You can say, baby, you can hold on. You say, see, so, so many of y'all have set up and told that lie before the pastor talking talk about something, uh, do better and for worse. You ain't doing about lying. As soon as things get bad, you ready to hit the door and to go and everything. But I want you to know, anything worth having is worth fighting for. And I'm going to tell you something. Look at your look at your neighbor and tell us, I'm going to fight for my family. I don't care. You might not care. About and, the, and you know what? The very person, I learned my, that lesson early when I was about fifth grade. There was a girl named Carolyn Ward. She's a little old, little old fat girl, but I liked her. And she had big old rosy cheek. I always liked the chip mark. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Always like a woman had she had cheeks. I just said just something about it, bro. She have to get that just did something for me. I kiss her on her cheek every now and then. But I got with the boys. And the Earl Nelson told me, said, man, ain't nothing to that good. Man, you ought to talk about her. I don't know what was wrong with me. But something got in my head, man. I went to that girl and I talked about her like she had a tail. He married to her right now. Thank you, Jesus. Turn if you will over to Romans, the eighth chapter. Romans, the eighth chapter. All you need to know is that you don't know. God, God ain't blessing you according to all that you know. God ain't blessing you because of how smart you are. God blessing you because of what you believe. The Bible says, with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. God don't even bless folks till they through. When you through, that's when he begin to start. God is not a co-worker. He's not a co-pilot. God works alone. He said, I look to the left and I look to the right. And I didn't find no God beside me. He said, I will work and who will hinder it? Who is it, Wade Lacey, that can help God? Man, as much as we love you, and man, it was people everywhere. I tell you what, you're a much loved man. It was people everywhere, in the church and outside of the church, man. Them people was heartbroken, man, when they found out that man, you was flat on your back huh, and you couldn't get up. Huh, and prayers was made, man, without ceasing for you. Huh. But as much as we love you, we couldn't reach out and get you. I want you to know something. Every now and then, God will put you out of the reach of the people that love you. Because so many times, huh, we hold people up and we keep them from going through. Huh. But I want you to know something. I believe in my heart, Brother Lisa. There's a testimony that you got that you didn't have before this happened. There's something that you know about God that you just didn't know before. What are you talking about, Brother Flan? I know he can and I know he will. I know that God is able. I know that no matter how far that I go down, the songwriter said that let me just go to Elaine. If he have to wretch if you have to wretch way, way down. And do I have a witness here? Is there anybody here that God, re he wretched way down and got you? <laughs> David, he testified. He said, this poor man cried. <laughs> and the Lord delivered him. <laughs> hey, he brought me up out of the muck and the mire. <laughs> and then he placed my foot on a rock to stay. <laughs> and so that's how come they ain't been able to knock you down. That's how come they ain't been able to, 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 to tear you down and, and to take you. But the battle now, beloved, is not in the truth realm. It is what it is. God said, I'm not a man that I should lie, not a son of man that I should repent. Then you are who God says you are. I used to wonder, why was it when I was in Fort Bend in Georgia and I, would, I went to Victory Land uh, Greyhound, watching them Greyhounds run. And I was drunk. Now, you know, they serving them, them free drink, but they ain't really free. You paying for them. And I was so drunk when I left there. I was doing 85 miles an hour uh, on I-85. And I looked in my, my glove compartment, Shirley, and in there, at that time they had them cassette tapes. And I had a cassette tape uh, where I had been preaching before I put the call backslide. Before I went back to drinking, where I went to dope and everything. And I rushed over there and I got that tape. And I threw that cassette tape in. And the title of the message was The Mind of God. And I began 
begin to hear myself preach up under the anointing of God. Drunk. The devil trying to kill me on I-85. But I tried to get in the crowd. Tears came down as I was drunk. And I said, God, I've got to get back. But you know what? They had messed me up so bad. They had me on a works and a legalistic system. They had told me that if you sin, then God done left you and God don't have nothing to do with you. But I want you to know I'm so glad that God got me here where I know that nothing, that the height, not depth, not power, not principality, not angels, not power, not thing present, not thing to come shall be able to separate me from the love. Look at your neighbor and tell him he loved me. If I don't get nothing else today, he loved me. It ain't got nothing to do. I want you to know, I, I told Lady Deborah we were laying in the bed this morning, I said we didn't have but two. And I tell you what, them, in the time, you just like your children, they done disappointed you so bad than everything. But I tell you what, it ain't been a day that I wouldn't stop Sister Brown, everything that I was doing, and I'd go. Why is it because I love him? The love of God. God told Israel, and Israel was an idolizer. See, see, the worst thing in the world that hurts you is when your mate go run off with somebody else. Come, come on, y'all. If you come on, y'all. Come, come on, y'all. God said Israel played the harlot, especially. Just to throw up when you done done everything that you know to do. You ain't slacking home. You make sure when he come home that his food is there. When he come home, you, you rub his feet as rusty as they are. He ain't never had no pedicure, but you rub them just like they're smooth as a baby. When he done had a hard day at work, you rub his head and everything. You make sure that he got, and that's what God was saying to Israel. I planted you a noble vine, and when I come back with fruit, I find wild grapes. He's like, what have I done to you that you would leave me and run off a horn after other gods? But then he told them, he said, I love you with an everlasting love. I, I tell my sons all the time, I said, the woman that leave you, that ain't none of yours. If you love somebody, you might leave out the front door, but you come back through the back door. <laughs> right now, Lady Deborah tell me she done fell in love with some nappy head Negro or something. And every time she's she finna go, I say, you need to pack two bags. <laughs> I help with the bills, but I'm sure gonna be right there with y'all. <laughs> You ain't, you ain't going nowhere because it's love. It ain't the fact of it. We all tore up about the shape and all this right here. Whatever, that figure eight going to turn into an eight. You just keep living. I had so many waves on my head, Brother Parker, that it, that it make you seasick. And now it's just a sliding boat. It's not the looks. Okay, I don't know what I'm talking about. Next time you notice how many big fat women that, that, that by themselves. It's these little skinny girls that look like they need something to eat, they ain't got nobody. <laughs> this right here for free. It, it, it ain't what you look like, it's how you make me feel. <laughs> What? All right, you, you, I know that went way, that went way over your head. That went way over your head. You might catch it in about 20 years. You keep grabbing and can bring it back. But it, it, it ain't what you look like. Let, let, let me tell you something. When I think that I know I'm in bad shape, and that's the reason that God told Paul, he told him, he said, I'm not going to move the thorn. You see, there's a place that you can get where you think you don't need God. That's the problem with money. Because you, you can get money and you feel like that you're different from other people because of the money that you get. It ain't no difference between none of us. And it is when we know that we don't know, that is when we can stand still and watch the salvation of God. There's nothing that God can't do with you. God can teach you how to go out and how to come in. Romans, let's go to Romans, let's go to Romans. How much time I got left? Let's go to Romans. Let's go to Romans. I was thinking about my daddy this morning, Vanda Jr. And everything, and I talked to my daddy before he died, Sheriff, and my daddy told me, he said, well, son, 
He said, everything that I know about God, you taught me. I thought about that this morning. And, and, and I said, you know, thank God that we get weak enough that we allow God to speak. And God always picks a foolish vessel so that he gets the glory. You see, God not going to pick nobody where they can say, look at me and what I did and whatever. But, but he's going to pick somebody, Brother Marcus Hughes, that if they get real honest, they say, if it had not been, oh, I'll run up out of here. I know who it was. As I come up here this morning, I didn't want to come this morning. Y'all, I'm sleeping. I'm tired. You done took an hour for, for, for what I'm coming for. I'm saved. I ain't, I ain't lose my salvation or nothing. That's how come I came. I came because I love him. I came because I'm seeking him, Brother Parker. I came because I don't want to go back to that place. There is a place of desperation, y'all. And I did not want to go there, Brother Jeff, but I thank God for it. I thank God that I went there. Because you know what? When things get rough, when opposition comes, when, 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 when false friends turn their back and walk away, when your money gets funny and your change gets strange, when, when, when folks treat you like you ain't nobody and there ain't going to never be nobody, when you think about where God brought you from and that you don't never ever want to go back down no more, you can say, God, Anyway, you bless me, I'll be satisfied. And it's all right, Lord, just like it is. Yeah. Brother Parker, maybe it is that that is when that Paul says, I have learned how to be content. I learned because ain't nobody, ain't nobody all right all the time. Don't you fool yourself. Ain't, ain't nobody all right all the time. But, but, but Sister Linda Cox, I've learned how to say it. it's all right just like it is. I heard the old woman say that if you don't never, ever, 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 ever do nothing else for me, you've still been good to me. You've been good to me. You've been good to me. You've been good to me. Been good to me. I like to be at home. I got something good to look at at the house. <laughs> I, 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 I like to be at home. God done blessed us where we riding good, looking good, smelling good. And then out of all that, the devil going to come in and tell you, you ain't nobody and you ain't nothing. I'll run up out of here. Thank you, Jesus. But I'm so glad the Bible said one time, let God be true and let every man be a lie. I, I, I didn't know nothing. And that's when God was able to help me. I said, Romans. Uh, the seventh chapter. Let's go to the end of the chapter. I know. I know. I said eighty first. Romans. He says here. Romans, the twentieth verse. Well, let's start the eighth verse. He says, "I know that in me, that is in my flesh." Now, the flesh is simply your efforts and your mind, your will, your intelligence, your resources. Uh, all of us, uh, you know. Uh, have intelligence. All of us have uh, the ability to do certain things that, that, and that it is the flesh. But Paul says here, he says, I know that in, my, in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present for me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. You see, church has become just a bunch of philosophers now. They have conferences and they write books and they tell you take five steps to do this and to do that. But I want you to know something. Corona, uh, it, corona exposed the church. They go into church and lying, talking about the power that they had. Said that we can heal folks and we take oil and, 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 and we throw this oil on you and, 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 and then we can cast out demons. Uh, we can stop stuff. None of these diseases will come now. your dwelling. Psalm 91 and everything. Corona came in in March and one of the main denominations that said that in April, they told them, they said, we're shutting down. We're shutting down. Now they're walking around with masks on. What you got a mask on for? Corona exposed. And I'm not saying that trying to be derogatory. What I'm saying is it matters what you believe. It matters what you believe. And I found this out too, Brother Parkin. If you care so much about what other folks think, you see, you got folks that won't press 
in order to get what God had for them because this is the church that mama went to and I promised mama when she died I wasn't going to leave the church. It ain't before y'all over there and everything and you making sure that the church keep going. You got good intentions but you ignorant. You got good intentions. You see what I'm saying? But you ignorant. Because you see, your priorities are not in order. Somewhere down the line, the lady Deborah told you, I just got my Medicare card the other day. Give the Lord a hand praise. Uh, Y'all might not praise him, I praise him. God knows just how to do it, their insurance is high. I was on a job as a, as a prosecuting attorney and everything, and I didn't know how to act. I'm walking around. I got a mask on with Black Lives Matter. The judge told me to take it off. I said, you making me take it? He said, don't make me make you take it off. You white, you telling me to take Black Lives Matter off. And I'm trying to prosecute a man that killed a black man. You'll get it after a while. Needless to say, it wasn't long. They told me we don't need your services. <laughs> so I got fired. I lost my insurance. But look at God. <laughs> look at God. He says, He says, in me dwells no good thing. I got nine minutes. I might not take them all. I mean, seven, eighteen. For the good that I would, I do not, but the evil which I would not, that I do. Now, if I do that I would not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. You see, you telling me to not do something don't help me. You telling me to do not to do something make me want to do it. I might not ever thought about doing it until you tell me not to do it. And it's just something in me that just longing to do that. Mm -hmm. Back when I come along, you couldn't mess with no white women. You weren't supposed to. And I, they did something to some folk about that. And it's just something because we couldn't have them. It's just something about no white women. Now you can have one you don't even think about it. Thank you, Jesus. It's something about when they tell you that you can't do something. And that's how the law was. He says in verse 22, for I delight in the law of God after the inward man, but I see another law in my members. I'm so glad I read the Bible now because y'all will going to never tell me this in the church. Y'all tell me that the reason that I was lying, the reason that I was cheating it was, was because I just didn't love God and I just wasn't no good and, and all that. But now the Bible says that I got something in my members warned against the law of my mind. I want to do good, but I got something inside of me. <sighs> I don't care. <laughs> Let me make it plain. <laughs> Let me tell you something. If you take you a whole bottle, box of x lax I don't care how much you tell in your mind, you ain't going to the bathroom. You going somewhere. Because there's something working in your body, in your members, that's working against your mind. I know you said, Pastor Jenner said that, but you got the point, didn't you? Look what he says in verse 24. Oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. Run on over to uh, verse to chapter 8. Chapter 8. I got one scripture over there, Lady Deb. You got to help me find it in there, and I'm going to let these folk go. Okay, uh, it's over on verse uh, 26, Romans 8 and 26. Can I read this? Romans 8, 26. Here the Bible says, likewise, the spirit also helpeth our infirmities. Now, why is it that knowledge don't help me? The reason that what I know doesn't help me is is because I will rationalize and I will justify. And that's the reason that religion is so dangerous. <laughs> you do things and you excuse what you do. 
Uh-huh. I come from a church that said that women weren't supposed to wear pants. But the men, Shaft, as tight as your pants was, you shouldn't have had none on. You should have had some, a skirt or something on. Them little tight pants you walking around in. Uh-huh. You down a homosexual and you just tell him he on his way to hell and he just in everything and, and you know Jesus asked the, 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 the people that brought the woman that were caught in adultery. He said, is, is I don't want y'all sex life straight? The Bible said they left one at a time. Jesus looked up, he said, well, where are your accusers? Ain't nobody in here, if you of any age, can talk about nobody else's sex life. But that's the main thing that folks want to talk about and try to keep people down. So we can't go on knowledge because we are rationalized and justify and I'll excuse behavior, but God's spirit is always true. And that's the reason that Jesus said, I'm going back to the Father, but he's going to send the Holy Ghost and the Holy Ghost is going to lead you and going to guide you. You have no reason. And that's the reason that when I come to church, I don't worry about what's going to happen or, or what I'm going to preach about or nothing like that because I'm going to let God have his way. Whatever the spirit want us to hear, that's what we're here. It's already been too made up, wrote. You already wrote too many messages trying to impress folk. You don't listen to that album and heard another preacher preach a message, now you preaching it. We heard the message, it sound better when he preached it. I need something from this. I need something from. Look, I'm through. Look, when Jesus was resurrected, for 40 days, he taught his disciples, he taught them. Let me wipe my forehead. My wife be watching me, y'all, and like when I have sweat coming on my head like this, it's just something her, she just want to come up here and just get the thing wipe my face. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Some of y'all too, don't you? When Jesus, this is the last point, I'm, I'm going to let y'all go. When Jesus, in those 40 days, talked to them, the Bible says he instructed them in the kingdom. He instructed them in the scriptures as they related and talked about him. He explained to them how that the prophet said that he was coming, that he was here, and about the, king, about the kingdom that was to come. He gave them all this teaching and all this knowledge. So you would think with all, if Jesus sat you down and talked to you, you ready. But he said, no. He said, I want you to go to Jerusalem and wait until you be endued with power from on high. You can't make it off with just what you know. You need the Spirit of God to lead you and to guide you. Let me tell you something. Sometimes, a lot of times, I won't let people tell me nothing because I don't want to know it. Sometimes the things that you know, you wish you didn't know. See, there's a difference between knowledge and wisdom. The Spirit gives you wisdom. Whereas even though you know something, you don't speak it. Because you're going to do more harm than good by putting it out here in the atmosphere. And so then, it's not knowledge. It's not what we know. I'd rather be dumb as a bullfrog and be led by the Spirit of God than have all of these DDs and EDs and all these other Ds and dry as a bone because no spirit. The Bible says, walk in the Spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. All you need to know is that you don't know. Clap your hands for the Lord. <laughs>